Hey guys, I'm Comedy Turtle, and welcome to another furry film review. Here I review movies that feature an animal or a character with animal-like physical features in the main cast. If you got a movie that fits that category that you would like to see me review, please leave it in the comments below with hashtag film review. If I find out to on something, then after every review, I'll tell you if I think the movie is brilliant or deserves to get slapped in the face by a fish like this. Today's movie is a little known film um, from a studio called Triangle of that, um, 1995. The movie itself is Catnap. Pretty obscure, right? So I thought, who better to bring in on this than Candy Jack? All right, hello, I am Candy Jack from um, the Candy Jack YouTube channel. I uh, talk about obscure furry media and um, spooky things sometimes. I guess that's about all I do. You should check it out. If you got any type of horror media that you would think he would like to check out, or another obscure furry media, not necessarily a movie, maybe a TV show, let him know. His channel will be linked in the description below. All right, ready? Here we go. So we open up with the main characters, Tori, Toriyasu, or Toya, sorry, Toria and his sister, Nico, um, whose dog has gone missing for a few weeks now. They're on their way to school uh, while trying to figure out what happened to their dog. Little Nico thinks that, that he might have been kidnapped by aliens. Orisu, uh, despite being a big alien lover, proven later in the movie, thinks aliens don't exist and thinks his dog just ran away. On the way to school though, the Amico noticed a trio of unusual looking cats. After they go to bed, the cats show up at their house and find out that they're the ones they're looking for. So these uh, cat people end up basically abducting children onto their uh, ship, I guess you can call it, and bring them to their cat world which they specify is not uh, another planet I guess because they they say they are not aliens I don't know what they're supposed to be maybe interdimensional beings or something mm -hmm. uh, but either way they are brought to a planet of cat people which is resting on top of a giant sleeping cat mm -hmm. if that tells you the level of oddity that we are dealing with here it's a little out of the wonderland here yeah, when uh, the kids leave the ship and uh, are exposed to the sun of this planet, they are then turned into anthropomorphic cat people, uh, just like everyone else on this planet. As apparently, if for people from our dimension, our world, whatever you want to call it, bathe in the sun of their world for two days straight, they become giant monsters. And don't you hate it when that happens? Yes, you think becoming a Hulk is bad enough. Now I'm after a giant Hulk cat monster. Or what has gamma radiation protecting from it? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If they end up meeting a wizard uh, who revealed that his apprentice, Dodo, no, not the Kung Fu fighting kind from Ice Age. His name's really Dodo. Uh, stole a magical artifact that would allow him to control a giant mutant dog who turned out to be Tori Suit his missing dog Papa Doll. When Dodo and Papa Doll comes to wreck the wizard's castle, uh, Papa Doll takes Mika with him when they go to escape. Once we get to the castle, it is revealed that the evil wood Princess Barbarina has been cursed to turn everyone she touches into a balloon. Why a balloon? Oh, there's an interesting backstory to that. 
When she was young, a wizard of some renown was doing a magic show at the palace for Barbarina's birthday. With his young daughter, Barbarina being a selfish princess, demanded the prince, the daughter, her to do a high wire act without any protection. She fell to her death, unfortunately. So the wizard cursed Barbarina uh, with the power of turning people into balloons. So no, I think so no one else would fall to her death. On the flip side of that, they will now be able to pop to death. There's a, a single needle or too much air and they go boom. So not a fun way to go. Meanwhile, back at the wizard's house, Torisu, the three cats, and the wizard assistant, Jocho, aka the love interest of this movie, is prepared to storm the castle. Well, not really storm storm, more like sneak in. Keep up with all, all the antidote to turn back into a normal dog. So that he and the kids can get out of there and go back to their world. I think this is around the part where uh, I turned my brain off and just enjoyed the pretty images. That's what I have written in my notes, so. Alright, so my colleague pretty much went brain dead at this point in the movie. <laughs> he and literally just enjoyed the pretty images on his own word. Babrina's plan was to turn a about 100 citizens or so into balloons and to throw them into a giant and blimp of a giant rat to wake up the sleeping cat which is literally the foundation of their world so that she would be the undisputed ruler yeah she would be the only one who could control the cat such a cliche story really you're not wrong they managed to rescue the kids rescue everyone and reverse Barbarina's curse, at least temporarily, anyway. Okay, so that everyone who was balloons become normal again. And the kids get sent back to the world. And it's revealed it's only been three minutes since they left. Yeah, the whole world in that cat world is three minutes in our world. Try keeping track of that. The trio cats return once again. Because Barbarina's at it again. And going to uh, Teresa and Miko to ask for help again. Leaving it as a cliffhanger. Alright, now on to the review bit. And I will review it on three topics story, characters, and rememberability. For me, the story was interesting. But at the same time, it's a kid's movie. There wasn't much to it. What do you think? And Candy? Yeah, it does, it does have a very interesting story, but uh, I think it is on the level of depth that a, a kid would be able to get behind. Um, the, the strong suit is the um, very weird visuals and imaginative uh, scenery of the world that we're in, which is all very interesting. I'll give a pass on the story. Hey, characters. The characters had some depth to them. They weren't completely flat. But at the same time, they weren't really interested in filling out a role than what they were a part of. Uh, what's your take on the characters? Um. Characters are mostly uh, okay. It kind of ranged from just sort of being there to some of them, like the little sister, uh, teetering into annoying territory. Um, but we did have a good villain. So I think the villain was uh, just, just right in terms of how she was performed. I got a classic idea of a salvage princess at Eagle, Eagle Maniac, and I spelled be careful for the life of me. How does have it in the titles right over here somewhere? And you will get her. She's selfish, only interested in what she wants. She's a good villain. 
beyond that, she's not the worst villain I've ever seen either. I don't mean on competence level, but in depth as a villain. Though, so, I'll say the, the characters were okay, not really brilliant, but nowhere near deserving a fish. Right, I'm, not, I'm about on the same level there. Rememberability. For me, this movie gets stuck in your head, no matter what you do. You see it once, and it's stuck in your head. For better or worse, this movie's stuck there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a, lot, a lot of the visuals are gonna stick with you. Mm. you. seem to keep forgetting story elements, though. Yeah. Visuals? Spot, spot on. Script-wise? Not so much. So, in my opinion, if this movie is brilliant or deserves to get slapped in the face by a fish. Quite frankly, I'm not going to be watching this movie time and time again, so it gets slapped in the face by a fish. What's your opinion, Jack? Hmm, well, I would probably say just, just give it a, a light tap at the head of the fish. Uh, it certainly hasn't done anything okay. offensive in the, uh, the wait, eyes of wait, wait, cinema, wait, 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 wait. But, uh, hey, do you want me to hit it with a fish head? Yeah, sure, just whatever works, I guess. It's just kind of like a, a midway movie for me. It's uh, not atrocious, but I, I'm definitely not going to watch it again anytime soon. I pretty much just watched it twice for the this review that we're doing, and um, that'll, probably, that'll probably be it. I'm content with that. This movie is available on YouTube to watch, so go check it out. Get back to me and give me your opinion if it deserves to get slapped in the face by a fish or it's brilliant. That being said, if you liked what you saw and want more, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications when my next video airs. Leave a like, maybe a comment, and please share it around. And also, check out Candy Jack's channel when you get the chance. Until next time, John A. Shoutouts this time goes to Prozimity. Over on Fur FMC and Candy Jack, who helped me film this episode. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Click the video on screen right now to check out another one of my videos. Until next time, Johnny.